This video will cover the topic, finding the initial amount and rate of change given an exponential function. A function that models exponential growth or decay is in the form y is equal to a times b to the x power, where a is not equal to zero, b is greater than zero, and b is not equal to one. For this kind of function, a is the initial amount. In other words, the value of y when x is equal to zero. The constant b determines whether or not the function will model exponential growth or decay. If b is greater than one, then the function models growth. And if b is less than one, then it models exponential decay. b can also help us determine the rate of growth or decay. If b is greater than 1, which implies exponential growth, then b is equal to 1 plus r, where r is the rate of growth or decay. And if b is less than 1, which implies exponential decay, then b is equal to 1 minus r. So, now that we are provided this information, let's try to work on an example together. A deli sandwich is placed inside a cooler. As the sandwich cools, its temperature, C of t, in degrees Celsius after t minutes, is given by the following exponential function. C of t is equal to 19 times 0.88 to the t. Find the initial temperature. And does the function represent growth or decay? By what percent does the temperature change each minute? Let's first determine the values of a and b in this problem. Well, a would be 19 and b would be 0 0.88, right? Exactly. Because of this, the initial temperature is 19 degrees Celsius. And since b, which is equal to 0 0.88, is less than 1, the function represents decay. Because the function is representing decay, we can use the equation b is equal to 1 minus r to solve for r, which is the rate at which the temperature is going to be changing. Since b is equal to 0 0.88, we say that 0 0.88 is equal to 1 minus r. By subtracting 1 from both sides, we get that negative 0 0.12 is equal to negative r. Then we can divide both sides by negative 1 and we get that r is equal to 0 0.12. However, for this question we need to convert it to a percent. And in order to do this, we move the decimal over to the right twice. So we get that that's equal to 12%. So, our answer to the last question is going to be 12%. Okay, this makes sense. So, first we find values corresponding to A and B based on the problem. Then we're able to find the initial temperature as well as the rate of change depending on the value of B, right? Exactly. Great job.